Welcome to the Shield Your Business from Chaos podcast, where there's no building, no people, no third-party suppliers, and no systems all combined to create Chaos the Dragon, which is battled by King Phoenix and his shield. Hi, welcome to the Kingsbridge Business Continuity podcast where we talk about all things business continuity, sometimes disaster recovery, and other related topics. My name is Roswita Firth, and with me today, we have the incomparable Bruce Wingert. Um, That's that's, that's my description. He's a very modest guy, actually. But he comes to us with about 20 years of business continuity experience, Um, came from information technology, as a lot of us in this field did and um, has a wide variety of industry experiences, including healthcare, retail, outsourcing, um, insurance. And uh, did I forget anything, Bruce? I think you got them all. Good. Before we get started in our conversation today, let me say just a few brief words about our sponsor, Kingsbridge BCP. Kingsbridge is a software as a service and consulting services provider to business con- for business continuity um, to companies globally. And uh, they've been in business since 1983. And uh, Skip Williams, I will say, is a really good guy and he's a delight to, to work with. And um, I've also interviewed him on uh, this podcast a number of times. So Bruce, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. Uh, Today, we are going to be talking about emergency response. What do you do when you get that call? And by that call, we mean pick up the phone and somebody says, all hell has broken loose, the building's on fire, the data center's down, whatever that might be. And um, in the lead up to this podcast, Bruce and I had a chance to, to chat about this and he had some really interesting things to say about how to handle that phone call and what comes next. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Bruce, to kind of lead off with kind of where you wanna focus our conversation today. Um, and I, I hope our audience enjoys this. I think it's gonna be a really interesting conversation. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, and yeah, I mean, it, It's one of those calls that everyone hopes they don't have to take. Uh, It's that call that someone is in distress. And fortunately or unfortunately, I do have some experience with this. Mm -hmm. I've taken that phone call when um, uh, coworkers have been evacuated from a building because of an earthquake uh, or that they are sheltering in place and their building has been hit by a tornado. Um, And, you know, maybe a more frequently is, and, and some of the people that are listening might have experienced ones where, oh, there's a fire alarm going off for a, a number of different reasons and, and people have evacuated and they're standing in the parking lot waiting to get word from that fire department whether or not they should go in. And it, it's quite interesting because in our industry, so much of business continuity and disaster recovery, we're doing the all the, the administrative stuff. We're doing the planning. We're doing both business continuity disaster recovery plans. We're doing the BIAs. We're doing all of these things yeah. to try to prepare for the game. And the game is actually when the incident is occurring. I, I look at doing all of the BCPs and DRPs as the practice versus mm-hmm. going into the game. And that's, it's the one time when you hope that you would never have to play the game. Uh, because I, I will say that there are few things that any of us will actually go through that will be used to gauge how well our program is. You know, we can do exercises and tests all the Mm -hmm. time, Uh, but when these type of events go on, you are going to get visibility the whole way up to and including the CEO as well as the board because... (laughs) Boy, I, I, I jokingly will have to say, you know, well, the, the business wasn't able to recover, but boy, we really had good BIAs. You know, that, that doesn't <laughs> matter. You, you, yeah. your, legacy, your legacy is going to be how well you actually respond to an event like that. Mm-hmm. So I, I, you know, again, lots of people have not had to take the call and that's a good thing. But, you know, when that call comes, there are things that you need to prepare for. So 
Any any questions on your behalf there, or do you want me to expand upon any of that? Well, not no questions so far. I do know that when we first talked about this, I really loved your answer, um, which like the first thing that you do. Most people answer that question with, "Oh, we immediately call a meeting to activate the plan with you know the CEO and whoever else needs to to be on that decision call." That's kind of like the typical answer or some version of that. Your answer was empathy. And that's what I really, that's what made me in our conversation think, oh, this is the topic we need to be talking about. Because we floated some other ideas, right? So maybe if you could kind of go down that path for our audience, I think that it is equally important, but perhaps less talked about. Right. And that, that's a great point. And I almost look at it as the psychological response. It, it's mm -hmm. not the tactical response. And there are, I will say, two very important things that we as business continuity managers, coordinators, consultants, whatever we actually are calling ourselves, two things that we need to remember. The first is what you just touched upon, empathy, um, it, especially in today's world where we are working remotely, where an, an incident may have impacted part of our operations, uh, you know, a, a group of people, whatever that might actually be, and we're not there. We really need to try to put ourselves in their place and understand what they're going through. Because if I'm sitting a thousand miles away and someone just went through a tornado, their lives are turned upside down. They are chaotic. They might be in shock. And that's why yes. those first questions out of your mouth shouldn't be, okay, we need to do this, this, and this. It should be, are you okay? What can I do for you? What can I, you know, what, what do you need me to do in order to help your situation? Because it's that initial response that's really going to help how the, the overall recovery is going to uh, proceed. The, the second thing that I always like to say in addition to empathy, is that being, being calm is contagious. If you mm -hmm. are calm, that sets the tone. I've seen some people even say, well, one of the best ways that you can actually assist someone who is scared, someone who is traumatized, is to give them a task to do because that kind of brings them back yeah. down. Now, you know, so you know, it, that, that, that might be uh, relevant in a given a situation, but again, depending upon what has actually happened, if you're not going through that same oh, incident that they're going through and you're going to now try to manage it, you need to have both empathy and you need to remain calm because that will get you a lot farther than probably anything in that business continuity plan that you have because people are going to react when it actually occurs. You know, and that's a great point, thinking back to some things that... I experienced, yeah, you know, way back when you typically were on site, you know, or you knew your team members because you were all part of the same, saw each other in the elevator type thing, you know, even, even with large companies, there was still something about being physically present that when you, if you were the person who took that call, you could kind of immediately relate to what was going on. On because you were probably experiencing that same earthquake, that same tornado, that same hurricane or fire. Um, so I think that's an, a really important point is that when we are physically removed and may not have a normal day-to-day -day connection to the people who are experiencing the disaster, that leading with, you know, what can I do for you makes a big difference um, because there's nothing worse than feeling like your management, whoever that might be, is disengaged from your needs as an employee. Right. Yeah, that, that's exactly true. And, and obviously, each situation is going to be different. You know, a, a, a building evacuation because of a fire alarm, that's impacting the building. However, let's look at it a little bit broader. Let's look at it in an earthquake response or a tornado or some type of other weather-related mm -hmm. response there's probably a pretty good chance that your coworkers now have a disruption to their personal lives too. 
Mm -hmm. because an earthquake isn't going to be specific to a building. It's going to be to a region, a tornado, the exact same way. So not only are people going to be chaotic at work, but a lot of their first concerns is going to be, are my kids safe? Are my, is my spouse safe? Whatever that actually is. So there's, they're now going to be being torn multiple different ways. And that's why, again, we as the business continuity professionals, we need to stay calm. You know, we're the ones who are supposed to be prepared for these types of events. So mm -hmm. if we start to sound flustered or shaken, then people are going to know that. So that that's really, you know, brings in that that calmness. And, and, and not only that, but the situation is going to change. You might get, you know, initial responses that are at a certain threshold, but then things might mm -hmm. seem to get worse because as reports are coming in. So you, again, being calm is really, mm -hmm. really going to help you because that situation is going to change. I think context also becomes really important because mm -hmm. if it is the type of situation, weather is a, a good example, wildfires, anything mm -hmm. that is sort of a drastic incident, snowstorms aren't necessarily drastic, you kind of know that they're coming, but you know, if, if you've got employees in an area impacted by wildfires or tornadoes, as another example, um, the context of the fact that these people like might really be on edge anyway because this has happened before, like you've got to have that sensitivity. You can't just say, okay, I need you to go do X, Y, Z without thinking about what these people are going through isn't going to work, I think, in today's workforce, um, right. because you've got places that are impacted over and over and over again by the same type of incident. And even if somebody escaped a previous hurricane, for example, mm -hmm. there's that nervousness and tension of what if mm -hmm. that can really impact somebody's ability to focus on their job. Um, mm -hmm. I live in Houston now, and um, for a number of years, Houston was hit back to back with severe flooding. Um, wasn't even always a hurricane. Sometimes it was just a tropical storm. And uh, yeah, people had some serious PTSD when there were serious thunderstorms. I mean, yeah. it's it's not to be taken lightly, the impact that it can have on people's psyche. And then you're expecting them to sort of show up for work, whether physically or virtually, and they might watch, they might be watching the water come up of their front lawn, wondering, is it going to make it to my door? You can't just look at, this is what these people need to do for work, because this is what we need to, to recover, because right. you have no idea what they're going through unless you are talking to them and, and handling it with sensitivity. Right, right. And, and you know, we as planners, we try to prepare for all the different situations, you know, and in, in the chaos, the dragon that Skip talks about during the yeah. introduction of each one of these, uh, you know, uh, podcasts, you know, he talks about the, the loss of building, loss of, the, uh, loss mm -hmm. of technology, loss of personnel and, and loss of vendor. All of those things disrupt business. But the one big unknown, and this is always going to be, is the human response. We have no idea how humans are going to respond. I've been in situations, you know, this is years ago where, um, you know, looking at potential ice storms coming through and maybe doing a preemptive failover of a data center and having mm -hmm. people relocate to the data center. But guess what? If, if people's homes are without electricity and their family is now sitting in a house that the thermostat is now, or the, you know, the, the temperature is now below 50 degrees inside the house yeah. and dropping, they're not gonna wanna leave the family. So it, it is very, very important to make sure that you're trying to understand that human element. And, and that kind of goes back to, uh, I'll even add on to the, the being calm part. As the situation unfolds and as you begin your recovery, you're gonna at some point bring together your emergency response team. It might be made up of you know, directors, vice presidents, whoever that actually is. However, again, very important, those first words that you say, that tone that you present, mm -hmm. when you begin that meeting, it's gonna set the tone across the board. 
because if you bring everyone together and you're chaotic and you're talking a mile a minute and all of a sudden you, they can hear how I'll say urgent uh, and mm -hmm. even maybe scared you are, mm -hmm. then that's going to lead everyone else's anxiety levels to increase. Great point. Great point. You know, it's right. having this conversation now is not a conversation that I think would have taken place when you and I entered the field. Right. It just wasn't necessarily <clears throat> how people in general thought about the human response. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful looking at the past 20, 25 years, thinking about how the workplace has evolved in general and mm -hmm. how our field has evolved that even when you have a business continuity professional who's not human resources trained, like I'm not, I don't think you are, we're still thinking about these things and talking about these things. And right. it makes for a more successful recovery. Mm -hmm. um, but it also helps with employee retention because mm -hmm. you handle a disaster badly and your employees don't think that you care, don't have trust that the company can recover from a disaster. Where are they going to go? Somewhere else where they feel safe and stable and feel like they have a guaranteed paycheck. So there's, you know, impacts kind of in different realms that, that have to be considered with this. But yeah, if, if your employees aren't convinced that you care, they don't have to stay. Yep. That's exactly true. Exactly true. And, and as we talk through all of this, you know, we're, we're talking about that emergency response and, and how people are going to all react to a certain mm -hmm. incident. You know, I don't want to downplay the importance of business continuity planning and disaster recovery planning because those are going to be important. However, we just need to understand that human response. They're going yeah. to react first before we get into it because I like to look at it as the business continuity plans are going to end up being your sanity check. Because once that initial chaos comes in and people start to, okay, what do we need to do? They're going to look to those plans to be able to say, oh, yes, we need to do this, this, and this. I'll also say that just, and this is through personal experience, people are going to start to recover naturally. They're going to, you know, if you're talking about your business division or if you're talking about your IT folks, they're going to start to do whatever they need to do because they know their systems. They know their business. They're going to start mm -hmm. to do whatever they need to do to get everything back up and running. That's when those plans really come back into place because as they have already started their recovery process, they're going to be able to look at those plans and say, oh yeah, I need to make sure I do A, B, and C mm -hmm. here. You know, I've, maybe I've already done A and B, but I forgot about C. So you know, that's where the plans really, really help. And, uh, you know, the, the other thing, most people that are in our industry now, just because it has been so recent, we all went through COVID-19 together. You know, there, there's going to be very few events that hopefully any of us face that are going to be as big and as far reaching as COVID-19. And I, I think that the one thing that COVID-19 taught us in the business continuity world is that it's a collaborative response. We are not out there on an island by ourselves. You know, we are going to be looking upon, you know, HR, facilities, mm -hmm. legal, all the other different departments. We're going to come together as a team to respond. And just like we saw with COVID-19, it's going to be the same thing if you are unfortunate enough to, you know, have a location hit by a, a typhoon or a hurricane or an earthquake or whatever it might be. Everyone's going to come together. It's going to be your role as the business continuity facilitator to facilitate the meetings, make sure everyone's doing the right tasks, make mm -hmm. sure that you're keeping track of everything and, and you know, trying to ensure that the recovery is going as smooth as possible. So again, building those relationships with mm -hmm. those different teams is going to be really, really critical to your success. Absolutely. That's a great point. Um, yeah. You know, I, I feel like we could probably go on uh, for a, a good long time talking about this because it's such important subject matter. And we both come at this from, you know, years of experience of observing the human condition and dealing with incident, crisis, emergency response, disaster recovery, business continuity, all those things. 
however you define the terms, it's, you know, we're talking about all of this, basically. All of this information applies regardless of whether your hat says IT on it or human resources. It doesn't matter. All of the stuff is truly, truly relevant to a successful recovery, whether it's, you know, systems or, or people. Um, so before we close for today, did you have any kind of parting thoughts to share with us on this? Yeah, let, let, me, let me kind of end with two different things. First and foremost, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about everything that's going on, but what can we do? You know, how can we make ourselves better moving forward? And, and mm -hmm. my best advice right now is to start building relationships. Build relationships with the people in charge of facilities because you might need them. Build people, build the relationships with HR and with all the different department heads who yeah. you think might be needed at time of incident or at time of disaster, because that's really, really going to help. And also, even if you're building relationships with the different, let's say you are a, you are a multi-site um, business, build relationships, get to know those people in the different sites, because that's going to allow them to know that you're mm -hmm. there for them. They're going to be able to, you know, they already have that friendship that's built with you. Mm -hmm. and, and they're going to be able to count on you as opposed to counting on this, relying upon a stranger that they know mm -hmm. that nags them twice a year to update a business continuity plan. You know, so it, yeah. it, again, build the relationships is, is probably the, the best advice that I have, you know, yeah. moving forward. And, and I'm going to kind of end this with uh, this, the same thing that I started off with. You know, I hope that no one actually has to take this call. But unfortunately, as I mentioned before, probably the, the thing that the executives are going to know about you is how well you responded to that incident. That is going to be your legacy. Did the company recover? And if so, you're probably going to be a huge part of that. So you really want to uh, you know, make sure you're attentive to what's all the different aspects of it. Excellent points. Excellent points. Thank you, Bruce. I appreciate your time today. We'd love to have you as a guest in the future. Um, so I think we could have lots of interesting conversations about dif different aspects of, of what we do. So I'd love to invite you to come back for another recording sometime. Uh, I hope you it's enjoyed it as well. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. And I really, really thank you for the opportunity to discuss this today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And to our audience, thank you for tuning in today. We drop a new podcast um, every two weeks on Monday. So look for this one coming up and um, you can find us wherever you find your podcasts. Thanks again for tuning in. This is the Kingsbridge BCP podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much.